Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's card I'm using a few different stamps and dies. Um, actually I don't use that first stamp set uh, other than the sentiment. And then I have Honeybee Stamps House Builder dies with some of the main uh, sort of core house dies. And then I'm using the Haunted House add-on from Honeybee Stamps as well with a variety of the in fact, I use all the elements in there except the fence. And for the fence, I used the Lawn Fawn Spooky Fence die just because I thought it would work really well. So, <laughs> hence the spookiness. And then I have in the left bowl, I have the Cricut Cut that I land up not using, but it's a cute witch from Many Monsters. And the right bowl had the all the other pieces from the Honeybee dies, all the little elements and things. So I have my trusty um, moon mask that I have had for a few years now <laughs> and it's still going and I'm going to use some crushed olive and um, mustard seed distress ink. I do bring in a different green. I wanted this kind of eerie green spooky <laughs> sky or at least that was the idea. <laughs> so. So the mustard seed actually gets kind of lost. So that wasn't the best plan in the world, but it kind of works. And in the end, when I bring in the third color, which is forest moss, I believe, um, it works out a lot, lot better. And it just helps to bring that in. I think the mustard seed and the um, crushed olive are just, they're, I guess they've got quite a lot, both of them have a lot of yellow in them. So one's more of a yellow green and one's a yellow. So I think that's why you almost can't see it here, but it still works out okay in the end and I'm really quite chuffed with it. And then this is where I was going to bring in peeled paint and then I realized I had the wrong, <laughs> although you can mix the oxides and the regulars, <laughs> the regular distressings, I actually wanted the distressing one. So I landed up grabbing the forest moss instead and it's, I'm glad I chose that instead of the peeled paint. Um, I really like how this combination actually turned out um, and you'll see in a second how much the moon glows when you take the mask off. So I decided to just add some of that and I'm just going back and forth between all the colors just to blend them a bit better. The cardstock I've got is actually a, um, I think it's a De La Roni, uh smooth watercolor paper. It's quite thick. Um, I've had it for many years. I think I got it at Hobbycraft or something donkeys years ago <laughs> but it's a really nice cardstock actually a watercolor cardstock it's nice and thick and this is going to be kind of a five by seven I'm calling them postcards because <laughs> they they're kind of my postcards are the things I don't kind of stick to a card base but I create what would be on the front of the card um, and then for my moon I'm using some pumice stone and a smaller one of those little blender brush things it's actually just a makeup brush <laughs> And what I did was instead of going, there's no art form in it, <laughs> I just chucked the color on there. But I also made sure that I didn't go right to the edge of the, the moon um, so that you still have that white edge that helps to make it look like it's glowing. And then I, of course I spritzed it with some water because I can't help myself. And instead of mopping up the water, I decided to leave it to dry on its own. It gives it a different kind of look when you leave you know when you don't mop it up with a paper towel or something like that if you mop it up it sort of picks that ink up um, and leaves it more white so I decided to leave that on there just for a different effect then for all these pieces <laughs> I'm going to use brushed corduroy for the majority of them and then on the white ghosts I will use some uh, black soot because they're white I kind of thought the black soot gave them that. I could have used a grey to be fair, like hickory smoke or something like that. But on everything else it gets a coat of <laughs> um, brushed corduroy. So if you ever need like that sort of vintage grungy old school kind of look and you like that, not just for Halloween or Christmas or anything like that, for any time of the year, if you like that look, that sort of old vintage grungy kind of thing, then just make sure you have a good, um, you know, a brown tone and I'd say a black or a gray. And I think you'll be okay. You know, it, it, you'll be set. 
basically because I could have used the actual colors and you know I could have used an orange on the pumpkins and I could have used a purple on the the main house and a green on the roof and things like that but I don't know there's something about the brown on those things on anything that actually I don't know makes it work much better for me so I tried the brush corduroy on one of the ghosts and I really didn't like it so <laughs> hence why the black soot then it was already on my desk but hence why that came out and then I did use brown uh, brushed corduroy on the all the black elements as well which believe it or not even though it's hard to see on screen in real life you can actually just see that that color or that tone of black cardstock actually changes a little bit so you can actually see it um, which I was surprised about but also in my mind I was thinking then I know it's done so <laughs> um, of course I had to do the fence as well so on the main house piece you would have seen that there were pieces cut out of that and the piece at the top um, the top window I can never remember what that's called um, and those dies are in the haunted house add-on and they actually just cut out the like the inside of the window not a framed window like you do like you do have from the original um, and some of the other sets so um, these are the pieces that I'm inking now are the pieces that are going to go behind those openings so I decided to go with a with the mustard seed I had that ink out and I just made it as dark as possible on the bottom and then lighter on you know on the way up the piece of card I just cut some cardstock to fit <laughs> nothing fancy and then I stuck them together my camera kind of <laughs> died at that point now what I want to do and what I'm going to show you here which is why I've slowed it down a little bit is I'm kind of getting an idea of where I wanted everything because I wanted to try and get that witch which I will show you in to the scene which is she was the starting point of this whole card um, so I needed to actually cut some of these pieces in half so that I've got half a house but the easiest way to do that is to cut the pieces individually because if you try and stick it all together and then kind of cut it in half you will be there for days <laughs> I don't know that any paper trimmer will actually cut that um, it would be very difficult I think to do that so in order to do that I thought the easiest thing is to work out which pieces will be on that part of the house that needs to be cut in half and then cut all those pieces in half and then stick the each half of the house together um, I didn't do the second half of the house until I was finished with this project anyway there was no point because it's not going on this card but <laughs> you'll see here I'll start to put it all together um, so this is where I've and it's it, you know I've cut it in half roughly it's not you know perfect <laughs> by no means and this top window um, you'll see in a second it is actually on there a bit squonk but I figured it's Halloween <laughs> what does it matter <laughs> so um, either I cut it wrong or I just stuck it down a little off <laughs> so um, I just went with it because it's like I say it's a Halloween house so <laughs> it doesn't matter so these are all the like half pieces for my house and I saw this I, I had never th well I'd not really thought about doing half a house <laughs> so, and I was scrolling through Pinterest or Google one of the two and looking for just ideas just to something because sometimes I lose my mojo and at the moment it's a little off and out of whack which is why my videos are sort of you know here and there um, some of them have music some of them don't some of them have me waffling some of them are kind of like live but not live videos and yeah um, things just that it happens so I actually saw I think it was a Christmas theme to one using the house um, and they used half the house and I thought that's genius <laughs> it's, so, it's so clever um, there's another idea that I've seen which I will also sort of uh, case and not their their actual um, whole card or anything but just the idea behind it and so I will try and bring that to you as well anyway here's the witch that I'm putting together now this comes from Cricut Mini Monsters so mum I know you have this um, and it's actually a really cute image um, I'm really into obviously die cutting um, at the moment I'm having a thing about it I love stamping but die cutting I'm having a massive thing about it at the moment I just love how it looks and I'm obsessed with my Cricut again <laughs> so, um, and I love um, mini monsters and happy hauntings and yeah some of those sort of 
old school i like the really old school cricket cartridges i know everybody's into all this other fancy stuff with cricket now but i like the old school stuff there was just something so wonderful about it so i'm going back to that so she does have some teeny tiny little eyes um i cut her at three and three quarters i believe um so her eyeballs although very tiny <laughs> um weren't too too difficult to actually get on there even for me <laughs> so that's saying something but i even inked all of her as well so <laughs> she's all like inked up and ready to go um and this is where i was trying to get her into this now i think if i just put the fence on and popped her in there maybe a tree in the background it would have worked out fine but i had all these other pieces that i really wanted to use i just thought they would have been so so cool to use all together but by the time I had tried to figure out where to put all these different pieces, like the, there's some gravestones and there's pumpkins and there's planks of wood and there's all sorts of stuff, you'll see as we go. And I cut three trees out because I thought in front of the moon it just looks so cool. And by the time I'd <laughs> got all these elements on there, I suddenly thought she doesn't really fit in at that point. So I could have left it as a much plainer card and like I say, put the trees on, maybe a couple of trees instead of all three of them or something like that, the fence, and then put her on and that would have been fine. Um, added maybe a couple of the, the ghosts, pumpkins, that kind of thing. But I kind of went a bit mad with all the other pieces, so <laughs> you'll see in a minute. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I just, I couldn't help myself. I had to use all of them because I think I've said this before in other videos where if you're not sure how many of something to to cut out when you're planning a, a card or something um i always at least cut three out three is a number i love uh <laughs> magic number but at least three of, of every element out um or at the very least cut more than you think you're gonna need so if you know i don't know if you think you might need to cut four you know because there's so much you can do with all these extra little pieces so for a scene like this and i forgot the chimney <laughs> of course um there is actually a chimney i didn't obviously cut that in half so when i make the other half of the other card um with the other piece i will obviously need to cut another <laughs> chimney out and all the pieces you know the extra elements so when um like when it comes to things like gravestones and the pumpkins and the the ghosts and the and there's bats as well that i was showing you the bats in the beginning with the stamp but i don't actually use the stamps so that's actually for a card that's coming up um where i use those bats but these um i forgot that i'd actually cut them out there is a die for, for some bats and so when you've got all these little elements that you can add on and you can add all these extra i don't know they just all add to the scene and you'll see and i really love how this turned out um i, I don't know it just works um you'll see near the end my <laughs> my hubby kind of makes his debut um not really but he was waffling to me <laughs> while, while i was still filming and he actually pointed something out where the roof now because i didn't think ahead too much on the sky although i wanted this eerie background i didn't think of course my roof is green as well so there's not a lot of contrast there so that's just something to bear in mind that sometimes it's nice to have quite a good contrast so I'm glad that I actually inked the edges because to me again with the inking the edges of everything especially for Halloween it gives it that sort of vintage grungy kind of mucky vibe which I like that part of <laughs> Halloween so that's just my thing so for me i'm kind of glad because at least there's that brown line so to speak on the roof because it was a very green it was quite a bright green it was lemon lime twist i believe from stampin up from forever ago and it's a cool green i just i kind of wish they not <laughs> got rid of it um but it was also <laughs> this my little gravestones <laughs> um it, it was also it's too similar to the, the sky so um that's just something to bear in mind if you want to think ahead think of things like that if you're going to have a background of the sky make sure it's not going to i mean it works but it's too similar that makes sense and so anyway back to the card so i have got some uh i put my fence up on some 
foam um, just to raise it up and also gives you a, almost like a space a natural space behind the fence to be able to stick bits and pieces now I decided in the end that the the my little gravestones that I created had to go behind the fence um, I was going to try and stick them in the front but that just wasn't working out and I did really simple RIPs in a white gel pen with some scribbly lines like the writing on a, on a gravestone and then I used a black pen just to I felt like a fine liner just to draw some scribbly lines to look like cracks in the gravestone <laughs> so I used to do this all the time when I used to sketch and stuff as a kid um, I've got old sketches somewhere <laughs> that are this kind of thing and then I know this goes against a lot of people and I don't mean to offend anybody but I put my cross upside down it's very Halloween-y for me <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah and it's got a spider on it so my camera died so eloquently at the right point of course um, and so this is after I've stuck everything down properly where I want it I've added the ghosts I've added the bats um, I've added the little pumpkins at the front and the the way the pumpkins actually their faces cut out completely so it was it worked out quite well with the fence the piece that I had below the fence because it sort of made their faces if that makes sense because I didn't have to stick bits of card behind it <laughs> so that was handy um, and now I'm just taking some um, it's a crystal a nouveau crystal glaze in like a I think it's called gray something or other and it's almost like a it's a clear this is gonna sound weird but it's like a clear but it's got a hint of color so this one's gray so I thought that works well with the ghost so I'm just filling in their mouths and their eyes and then for the um, for the what for the oh all the nail heads on the um, planks of wood that I've put across the windows and that I used a black um, it's called ebony ebony black I believe and it's a gloss it's the gloss nouveau drop and I just very carefully got that in there because it's quite thick because it's meant to make dimensional dots so um, but it worked it worked pretty well and then I'm taking a Sakura glaze pen in black as well and this is also like a glaze pen and going over all the bats and I will also very carefully go into the mouths and the eyes of the pumpkins just so that there's a bit of extra something so for me sometimes adding little extra bits like this make a card just that little bit more special so um, so yes I call these postcards because they're not actually on a card base yet I'm really bad <laughs> at sending cards out <laughs> so, um, yes I have boxes of them um, yeah <laughs> really really bad but I love making them and I obviously want to share that with you guys so I decided a couple of years ago to try making what I call a postcard so that those pieces are ready if I want to stick it on a card fabulous if I don't that's okay too <laughs> and I think something like this you could easily put into some sort of frame um, maybe a, a like a 3d frame or something and have it as a piece of artwork at Halloween so yeah so think of, of your artwork in that way as well so it doesn't have to always be the front of a card it can be something that you can then put into a little frame or if your other half is handy with a you know with I don't know what they're called like tools and stuff. <laughs> but like woodwork tools so you can make you a little frame that you can pop it into that kind of thing like a shadow box so yeah so there's where, where hubby was sort of pointing out about the roof in case you saw that but anyway so I also then used a stamp from that very first stamp set the tiny Halloween from Lawn Fawn that says have a fabulous day <laughs> so, so it could easily be a card that I turn this into um, or a card front I should say but I hope you like this um, I know this week is full of Halloweeny kind of stuff but I am obsessed with Halloween <laughs> in case you ever noticed and yes it's still the middle of summer so I will definitely bring you some other uh, ideas and inspiration and I uh, thank you so much for watching and subscribing and hitting the like button the what's it called the thumbs up <laughs> and I will see you again soon bye guys